Well, Ere, it's really nice to have a chance to catch up with you again following our very successful discussion with T-Day just before Christmas. Um, it was really the first time I had the opportunity to work extensively with you. Tell me a bit more about your background. Well, thank you. It's very good to be talking to you. And, well, my name is Eray Büksekban. I'm heading up the Global Tax Advisory Services Department at KPMG Turkey. So I've been working in, in this industry for 21 years, initially at Arthur Anderson, and after its collapse, I moved to KPMG, and I have now completed my 18 years. I've been a partner for the last six years and heading up the department for the last four years. Just wonderful. And, uh, you know, Ere, we were just talking about it just now. I mean, in international tax, this is like the most exciting time, right? There's just so much change and so many hot topics. It's, it's hard to know where to start a discussion on international tax these days. Exactly. You were talking to me about your thoughts on, I don't know how to describe, perhaps protectionism is the word, uh, deglobalization, stuff like that. It's a big topic today, right? Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, we have always discussed about the globalization, internationalization, and maybe thanks to, or I don't know if it's thanks, but to COVID-19, we have restarted thinking about our own borders and the taxation, also together with the impacts of the BEPS for the last decade. We have discussed about our borders and many economies are more keen to think about themselves to increase their revenues and they need it, uh, to be frankly speaking. So when we talk about Turkey, the very key thing that we are uh, facing nowadays is the thing about the Dutch holding companies where Turkish investors are widely using for investing into third countries. So uh, as a matter of multilateral instruments, we are facing a threat that the, uh, the famous exemption about the Dutch-Turkish double tax treaty may be lost, which is going to be creating significant problems for any kind of Turkish investors who have invested abroad. I mean, we are looking at it and we see like hundreds uh, billion dollars maybe uh, to be made up until now. So think about the dividend traffic that it creates any year. So it's going to be a very huge matter. And we are all thinking about how to go over with that because we are trying to understand what the government is intending to do together with how to get rid of it or how to sort it out or how to live away with it. So these are the things that we are discussing uh, in Turkey nowadays on the international tax topics. Likewise, when I look at Russia, it was a, a former neighbor of us, not, not now, but anyway, so it's the one of the biggest economies around the world and it is one of the most important markets for the last three decades. And I see that they are facing some similar uh, issues when it comes to the Netherlands holding companies. So they are about to terminate the double tax treaty unless they increase the withholding tax rates already defining the double tax rates. So protectionism, protectionism is everywhere. And we and all tax advisors, all taxpayers are trying to live along with that while trying to protect their own interests and also uh, trying to make the tax authorities happier. It's really interesting, isn't it, Eric? Because a lot of people, you, you know, when you think about the multilateral instrument, a lot of people were advocating that this is important for fairness and equity and transparency and all those things. And yet, the way you see it being implemented, or being chosen to be implemented by a lot of countries, it really does have this, you know, protectionist lens on it, right? It's it's a fascinating thing. And I think, I don't know what your view is, but my view is that's probably just gonna continue for the foreseeable future. It will. That's my that's my expectation as well. Yeah. And then very that sort of sort of moves us into the next area where people talk about fairness and equity and things like that. And that's this whole area of the taxation of the digitalized economy. What are you seeing on the ground? Well, indeed, when you say it is the next era, maybe it's the same era. 
So again, it's a matter of protectionism because, I mean, okay, this time we are also saying that the double tax treaties currently are not able to address the uh, taxation of digital economies, but it is the same thing again. So for the last five years, we are talking about some withholding taxation in Turkey. And we are also, for the last two years, we are talking about the digital service taxes. And I'm sure this is not new to you or to, to anyone. So it's the same everywhere. And uh, we are, I mean, also uh, aware that the OECD is trying to formulate it. And when it comes to digitalization, when there are no borders to consider anymore, it's a huge, huge matter. So that is going to be a very tough task for OECD and how they are going to address the digital economy. Because what is happening at the moment, at least in Turkey, and like probably in many other countries, the, the failure results may not necessarily be achieved with the current tax applications. So someone needs to say, look guys, stop. So this is where we are trying to find the formula. But then the next thing will come, and how about the formula? How about the reaction of the countries to the formula? Because at the end, we are talking about each and every country's intention and the interest to get a fair uh, part or portion on the overall wealth that is created by a digital economy. And this wealth is going to be much, much more in the coming years. As opposed to the past years, it is also already uh, incredible at the moment. And I, I cannot really imagine how far it can go, but I'm sure there's going to be no limit. And when there is no limit, everybody will be interested in taxing that. And let's see whether we are going to be able to find, each of us, whether we are going to be finding a fair formula to address that and to get everyone the fair portion among that. Well, you know, it's, it's fascinating because I, I tend to agree. Even old line industries, right, that you think of bricks and mortar type, are moving to digitalized services. And so the whole business model of most companies is just changing and our tax system, yeah, maybe, exactly. it, is, maybe it isn't where it needs to be for that purpose. Well, this is just fascinating, right? Um, what are your predictions for, for Turkish tax in the upcoming year? If, if, if I had to press you on, predictions? Well, uh, I think the key discussion will be around the principal purpose test. Mm. So, I mean, it's another product, so to say, about the MLI. And I am living in a country which is famous for the tax authorities aggressive behavior. Just relying on local legislation, which is in terms of hierarchy, not higher than the double tax treaty. What happens with the MLI, which is supposed to be equivalent or even more than the double tax treaties? And the most famous product of that MLI, which is principal purpose test. So, I mean, it's a matter, I mean, the key question for us will be whether substance, whatever that substance is, will be sufficient to convince the Turkish tax authorities or many other tax authorities that, yes, there is a beneficial owner over there, or whether there are some intentions, it yep. is not the main intention, but some intentions to decrease the tax revenues of that country. And look, I mean, Turkey may be finding its own formula to say that we are fine. How about the other country? There are no more borders. The, the, the thing is, we are trying to tax the economy within our broad borders, but there are still no borders. However, we are still keen to put it in our borders. And principal purpose test will be a key matter, probably during the next decade, that we are going to be discussing about. Well, I look forward to getting back together with you, Eri, to, to sort of see how this rolls out in Turkey. Just fascinating. Uh, hey, look. Thank you for your time. It was really good to catch up with you again. And I'm wishing you the best for the new year. My pleasure. Likewise. And I wish you, everyone, Happy New Year and at least better than 2020. I'm sure it will be. Okay. Thank you, Eric.